TNT.
<clears throat> um, Lester, just a um, big game for you today. He was looking real good on the boards and also just uh, distributing the ball and playing help defense. Just uh, tell me a little bit about your mindset before the game started. Um, well, uh, going into games like this, uh, coach is really emphasizing us just really moving the ball, uh, just focusing on the little things like defensive fundamentals and, and rotations and stuff like that. So uh, just really, really just focusing and locking in on the game plan that he gives us that we study uh, a couple days before. Uh, that's really just what he focuses. <laughs> Lester, you turned 19 today, is that right? Yeah. So if you could just kind of, I mean, career high, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just talk about your day and just how, you, how well you played. Oh, uh, well, uh, I mean, um, just really uh, crashing the boards since they were a, a pretty undersized team today. So just really crashing hard every time uh, and just really breaking their press, finding my open teammates. Um, just really doing all the little things, rebounding and everything else uh, and just cheering for the guys who got in at the end uh, when it's their time to shine. So just really being overall a good teammate today was my goal. Brian Warren with uh, WeDon'tBluff.net. Uh, my question could go for both of you guys. How different was it today playing without James Wiseman? Uh, I mean, uh, it, it, his presence is huge. I mean, seven footer in the paint, just his dominance is obviously wasn't felt, but uh, I feel like uh, other guys stepped up, like uh, Zay, Isaiah Maurice came in. Uh, he had nine rebounds in 12 minutes. So just uh, guys like that, Lance coming in, uh, getting, I think he had three blocks or two blocks. And just coming in, those other guys coming in, stepping up, pressure stepping up. Uh, it's just big for those guys to step up uh, until everything gets cleared out with that. Question for, pre <clears throat> Question for Precious. So you scored quite a large amount of points today, but you were continuously sent to the free throw line. Yeah. What does it mean to you that the opposition had to take that option to stop you? Being sent to the free throw line? Um, I understand in the whole country, I'm probably one of the few dudes that could get to the free throw line that will, you know, just based on, you know, the way my physicality and just the way I play. So I take that as a priority and get to the free throw line every game, and. I, I think that was something that came into this game <coughs> and wanting to do. And I, I think I got to the free throw. I just got to knock them down, you know, in the game. But that's just showing me I made, on the papers that I made, 8 out of 20. So it just tells me I could, I have to work on that, you know, there's room for improvement. I don't see that as a negative. Even if I missed a lot of it, it just shows me I had a good game. But I still have a lot of things to work on to become, you know, better. So. Sure, it's been a long week for everybody, but what's the conversation been like behind the scenes amongst you guys, amongst whoever? Just what's what's been the talk in terms of just with the whole situation with James and all the back and forth and all the noise and distractions and you know, perceived negativity. Um, we don't we don't see us as a as a negative. You know, I think it's a chance for every guy, like you said before, for every other person to step up and. Um, play the game of basketball you know we all we all here to play we understand James is not playing right now which hurts the team in a way <coughs> because he's a big part of the team obviously but I think it's an opportunity for the other guys to step up and play dudes that haven't played a lot of minutes to step up play and show what they could do you know until everything gets reserved but at the moment even when we you know we all talk to James every day that you know, we all hang out we tell him like yo you know just Keep your head in the game and stay locked in. Everything is going to get clear and you're going to be back on the floor playing with us. A uh, question for Precious. Um, just explain how has it been for you adjusting to playing the five? Um, it hasn't been like a, when you say adjusting, I, I don't think it's a thing of adjustment to it. Um, I understand it's going to be some games where we're going to have to go small. Um, I didn't anticipate the <coughs> situation that we have right now, you know, James, we James being out. But I've always had to play the five, you know, in some games just because of matchup and stuff like that. Or maybe if, it's, if my team have to go small, I've always had to play the five, you know. But it's just, it don't feel any different. I just treat the game the same way every day, go out there and just play and find a way to affect the game positively.
Thank you for making an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Uh, good game for us to, uh, to kind of come back home to. We knew that we had an opportunity to kind of uh, right the ship coming home. Um, the guys started off a little a little slow, but then we got it going with that second unit that came in, and then the energy picked up. And uh, I felt like we did a really good job turning them over 26 times. It's something that we want to do. We feel like in the Oregon game, we needed to pressure more and then get an opportunity to pressure as much. Um, and we worked on it yesterday and the day before to come to today's game uh, to cover the three-point line. They were five for 27. We did well on that. And then also to turn them over 26 times was great. Uh, obviously, 18 assists and 19 turnovers isn't something that we want. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take uh, what we did with turning them over and, uh, and shot percentage. And uh, I'm sure we won't you know, continue to, to be negative on the uh, assist turnover ratio. Coach, you said you didn't want to play Precious at the five, and you started with him and Lance out there. What were your thoughts with them two out there, and also when bringing in Isaiah and DJ as well? Yeah, Isaiah actually uh, deserved more minutes tonight. I just tried to get Precious going. You know, I tried to give him some confidence because he only shot the ball five times against Oregon, and I changed during the during the game to try to just get him more minutes at that position. <laughs> Okay. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, yeah, just to build on that, with without James for however long you end up not having him, um, what did did you learn anything today that will help you moving forward in terms of what are the best lineups, what are the best sets, what are the best things you need to do when you don't have him, or do, do you not want to change too much because you know he's going to be back eventually? Yeah, guy, no, we don't want to change too much because, because you know, we know he's going to be back eventually, you know, earlier than later. Um, but the guys can just slide over and understand, they already understand the, the rotations, they understand the offensive side and the defensive side of what we want. And, um, you know, we're not going to change too much. Penny, is there... In terms of the performance you got tonight, is it hard to ask for much more than what you got? Uh, it, this is a team that you probably felt like you had a good chance to, to win by big, and you did so? Yeah, well, I'm a coach. You always ask for much more. You know how coaches are. Nothing's ever perfect. We always need more. But we're, we're when we play in these games, and there's, like I said, there's no knock on Alcorn. We were supposed to win this game. you got to challenge yourself. To put yourself in a in position that you can, we want to do things that's going to carry over to the Little Rock game, and then get better by the Ole Miss game, and when we have to go play North Carolina State, that we're not behind the eight ball. Like I felt like we were behind the eight ball when James got into foul trouble and uh, and Precious got into foul trouble, and, and these games are a chance for Lance Thomas and Isaiah Maurice to step up and hold their own in case we get into that situation again. Penny, I think everybody knew about Lester's shooting ability coming in. Have you been surprised at all by his hustle and his ability to rebound and pretty much play all over the floor? You know what? Actually, when we recruited him, we saw that side of him uh, more so than the shooting side. We saw the, the, the grittiness and the, and the toughness and, and being able to get a basket when he needed, get a tough rebound, you know, take charges, do all the small things that help, uh, that help teams win. So we, we see that every day in practice. So we, I, we knew that when we were recruiting him. Penny, uh, these um, past couple of weeks, uh, there have been a lot of negativity, a lot of great clouds going on. And uh, with such a young team, how are you keeping the guys focused? Well, obviously they understand what's going on, and it's just part of life. Nothing that we can do about it right now. We just have to continue to try to focus as hard as we can, and we just keep everything right in front of us. It's on to the next next play. We talk about next play, next game, uh, and that's it. The guys understand what, what's going on, and. We know we still got to win basketball games, and that's what our goal is, and that's where we are right now mentally. Okay, Penny, with being a coach and uh, being a leader, okay, and um, something I kind of noticed throughout the game, like at least every two or three plays, the guys kind of huddle up and they talk about it for a second. Uh, describe the importance that of uh, the players being a leadership more than also you. To keep yeah, everything obviously, in control. you know, you want your, your point guard to be an extension of you. And the huddle is just kind of reiterate what's going on. If things are out of order, straighten them back up and what the next play is on defense or what the next play is going to be on offense or whatever. So it's very important that the guys police themselves and that they don't hear my voice all the time. I think that's very important. Uh, Penny, 
it, as you're going through this Wiseman stuff, it occurred to me you had to sit out for a year uh, once upon a time, a long time ago. Does that in a way help you relate to what James is going through? And when you look back at that, was that, I mean, is it, was it fair? Does it frame at all your sense of the NCAA? Like, uh, you're obviously a smart guy, you know, like you had to sit out for a year. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, you know, match the two because, you know, I just didn't take care of business, you know, academically uh, through the, uh, the ACT. I really didn't take it. I took it for granted and thought that it was just going to be easy and it didn't happen for me. In this situation with James, obviously we know he's an innocent, innocent kid that's just wondering why he can't play. It's, it's a total difference. TNT.